Hello and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me again. We're here for a TBR game of a sort. What I'm trying to do today is I'm going to try and predict my December reads rating by reading the first line of the book. Behind me you can see my December TBR. Granted there are a few more in my TBR that I have on audiobook or as an ebook only, but altogether I have I think 28 books on my TBR. If you've been on my channel before, you know that I'm not the type of person who has a TBR and then has to read them all, so I'm expecting not to get to all of them, but I'm obviously going to film my prediction for all of them because I don't know which ones I might not get to. I'm very particular about how I'm picking my TBR. You can see old TBR videos about how I pick the prompts etc and it's a whole process. If you want to see all the books that are on my TBR you can go onto my Goodreads and there is a shelf called December and everything on the December shelf is on my TBR. Let's get started. I have written down all the first liners on little sheet. I have omitted titles, I have omitted things like acknowledgements, honors, introductions. It didn't matter how many words were in the first sentence, I just took the first sentence that I felt like was the first sentence of the story. For this I did not go through all all these books. I didn't want to get too much of a tie towards a book so I remember what this is about because I want to go into it as blind as possible. If you've been to my channel before you also know that I always go into my books as blind as possible but here I don't want any emotions tied to the and, and just be able to judge them by the first line. It would probably be in how preferably if somebody else could do this for me but I'm not in a position where I have somebody that I can ask to do this. So pretty much what I did is I went on script or please tell me how to pronounce it. I checked which ones are available as an ebook and just copy pasted the first line and for those who that weren't available on um, a script I went on to Amazon, sent me a sample to my Kindle and then I opened them up one after the other trying not to look at the cover and then just typed up the title. I think with two books it's going to be really hard for me not to know which book it is because I had to translate them from German. All right so I'm going to read the first line and then I'm going to rate it and then at the end of the month we're going to see if I'm right. The first one is late one evening toward the end of March a teenager picked up a double barrel shotgun walked into the forest put the gun to someone else's forehead and pulled the trigger. Wait that's the first line in one of the books that I picked? Okay I don't know how to feel about this. It's intriguing it's very very straightforward I'm not sure if it's going to get more grim after this I'm I'm thinking not. I think this is going to be a four star. It is said that the first first king of Aloria was born with fire in his blood. Aloria, that's obviously a fantasy, Aloria and king. Fire in his blood could be anything. As a first line, I really do need a second line to see where this is going. I feel like it's a good first line, but it's not a punchy first line. It feels already a little bit like I'm pushing information on you in a way. I think this is going to be a three star. Sproom sprayed over the front forward of the cog. This is one that I had to translate and I was like okay this is already has like three words in it that I have no clue how to translate properly so please forgive me if that doesn't make sense. Just with this one liner you can tell that it's on a ship and I'm pretty sure I know which book it is. I have quite high hopes for this book. Just judging by the first line though I think it would be a three star. It's just that it doesn't tickle me the right way when we're starting on a ship. Okay if someone had told me those many years ago that I would spend the bulk of my life as a assistant and eventual partner to one of the most eminent detectives in London, I would have thought him a raving lunatic. That sounds a little posh, but a little intriguing. Hmm. This could be good, but this could be going really, really, really bad as well. Let's put this at a three star as well, because this could go either way. Potentially I'm going to really love it. The palace still shook occasionally as the earth rumbled in memory, groaned as if it would deny what had happened. Ooh, I like this. I like this a lot. It's like a fading memory. This is obviously fantasy, but the way it's written just feels, mm. I think I'm going to put this as a five star. Even though I'm not in the biggest fantasy mood, I am very particular about my fantasy mood right now, but I have some good ones on my shelf and I'm hoping that it's one of them. 
them. There are two possibilities after this stunt. We'll be Empress's favorite tigers or we'll get expelled and taken away in chains, Damon said. Uh, why did you have to put the name in there? Why does the name destroy everything? It felt interesting, intriguing, and then the name was like, it feels cheap. Three stars. Potentially two and a half? All because of a name? Oh my god. He was asleep, but woke at the sound of the key turning in the lock. Ooh. That says nothing. Let's put it at three stars. I do give out a lot of three stars when I'm reading books as well lately, I feel. I feel like I should have more five stars on here. Or four stars. Once upon a time, there was a man named Jack Gilbert who was not related to me, unfortunately for me. I feel like I should know this. I should know which one it is. I like the unfortunately for me. It feels like the narration could be a little bit humorous. Let's give this one a four star. Are you rating this with me? I really would love to hear your ratings. It had rained the day Anna's mother died, but that was hardly unusual because it rained most days in England. Hmm, I like the beginning, but then I'm not into the being set in England right now. I don't feel it right now. It's not my mood. This could impact, and I have literally no clue which one this could be. It's so interesting that I have no clue. This could go either way. Let's give it three stars. Nobody least of all his boss had to pressure Tomo into working after hours on a Friday. Is this about mental health? I think this could be a four star. In 19 years before she decided to die, Nora's seat sat in the warmth of the small library at Hazel Dean School in the town of Bedford. I think I'm going to give this a five star. This tickles me the right way as well. I like how it starts with telling us that in 19 years she decides to die. I like the way that it's set up and I feel a deep book coming up and yes, it feels right. I think this is Chinese. In Shenmingting, a small town situated in the vast estuary of the Pearl River in Guangdong, my great grandfather Fu Chu awaits his bride. That's an interesting first line. I feel like the first line is a little bit chunky. It doesn't feel like prosaic enough. Two and a half, two and a half to three. Just because I feel like the writing style could potentially be a little bit too clunky for me. They said the only folk who belonged in Deadshot after dark were the ones who were up to no good. I feel like I should know which book this is. Still, I'm not trying to, but I feel like I should. This could go a little bit morally gray. This feels very fantasy. Let's give this a four star. There's something about it that I'm intrigued about. From the night we escaped the palace. What was at first a light scattering of flakes grows into a snowstorm. I like this. I'm giving this a fiver. I like the writing style. The army crept like a dark stain across the horizon. Ooh, having an army right away in the beginning. That sounds very fantasy as well. I have a lot of fantasy on my December TBR, but I'm not 100% convinced by this one. I'm just gonna give this a two star just to diversify. First, the colors. Huh, let's give this a four. This time between the dark and the dawn, is mine. Ooh, that sounds commanding. That sounds strong. Let's give this a 3.5. So let's go to a 4. I do not have enough 5 stars on this. Or it would be shortly. Huh? What kind of way is that to start a book? This can be brilliant. My gut feeling says give this a 2.5. I'm gonna be so dead wrong. <laughs> I'm dead set on living my one life right, but I can't say the same for my brother. I don't feel it. 2.5. In 19 1985, if you were alert back then, this refresher may be unnecessary, even laughable. Oh, I like this. I like this. 4.5 to 5. Oh dear, Linus Baker said, wiping the sweat from his brow. I'm intrigued. Those of you who've read the book and know who Linus Baker is are yelling at me right now. 3.5. Ove is 59. Okay, I know which book this is because the name is in the title. Just by the sentence, Ove is 59, I do like it. It's intriguing me and I would give it a 4.5. Don't trust the fire for it will burn you. It sounds a little bit tropey, cliche, fantasy. Oh my god, if this is going to be one of my favorites, I'm going to really be angry with myself, but I'm going to give it a 2.5 because it just feels off. We'd been driving for about 7,000 years. Oh no, mm -mm. two stars. 7,000 years already sounds so whiny. I am not a New Yorker and I want to go home. Oh, same thing, 2.5. A misty morning lay over the city of Kings. Okay, fantasy vibe, nothing special vibe. I mean, this could be an introduction to a bigger series. 3.5, I have two left. Block, well, that's how he started, two stars. 
I don't like it. She woke in the dark. Sounds fantasy-ish as well. Sounds a little bit like prisoner, poor little girl, tro rising to I'm going to be the biggest badass. Let's give this three stars. I don't think I did diversified my ratings enough, but I'm really interested in hearing what you think, what your rating is. Now I'm going to be reading these books throughout December and I'm going to film my reactions one as soon as I finish the book to see how I liked it and what I predicted. I'm going to release this one right now as it is and I'm asking you, do you like this concept? Do you think it's interesting? And in the future, would you now directly want to see my, my final thoughts? Which books are these? And or do you want to guess along with me? So I finished the summer I turned pretty and I'm <laughs> moving away. Bye bye. That was not for me. I do understand how some people like Jenny Han's writing, but I just don't. I could do with the writing style if I would enjoy the characters, but there was like no character development. The main character was just incredibly whiny and selfish and annoying to like, oh, and I just had trouble connecting to these characters like completely. If that's the case, I could still enjoy a book thoroughly if it is a great plotline, which there's none. I think this could be a book for some like 12 year old girls who want a little romance book with shallow characters. It's not for me. Two out of five. So let's see. And this was a week been driving for about 7,000 years and I gave it two out of five. I am a one out of one. <laughs> I actually got it right. It's two out of five. I hope it's not too loud. My son is uh, cooking his lunch. I finished a Snow Like Ashes, which I am turning into a book box for Ilva. I give it three out of five stars. I feel like I understand the type of person this book might appeal to, but for me, it was just the main character was way too annoying. I just hated her selfish whiny ass. I do like a faulty character where somebody is whiny or is selfish if there's an arc and we see how she learns and then develops into a different type of person but here we had this revelation in her very bluntly so it wasn't like a gradual thing that you could see she was like selfish 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 and then she had this oh my god I'm completely selfish I should be different I should act differently and then go back to her selfish ways and then a couple of pages later again oh my god I've been so selfish haven't I and that just annoyed me so much. It might be real, but I think I could deal with this type of character in a contemporary where this is the topic. It is the topic that this is the reality of people wanting to change and then not uh, and then announcing the change and not doing it. But it needs to be wrapped up differently. In here, it was just annoying. I think this is potentially how people who do not like Throne of Glass feel about Selena. I do think that the plot line was quite predictable for me, but this could be because I've been reading so much YA fantasy over the past couple of years. I just have learned how to predict better. I'm assuming somebody who has not been reading over 100 books a year potentially might be a little bit more surprised. Lastly, I feel like this could be a book for somebody who wants like a swooning romance between people, potentially love triangles, different love interests, heroic, lovable, swoon-worthy book boyfriends, <laughs> which just is not me. It's not the worst, but it did not hit my enjoyment. I gave this three out of five stars because I see the objective enjoyment. My personal enjoyment probably was more of a 2.5 star, but I do think it earned three stars. I already got this out because I don't want to spend half an hour looking for this on camera. Um, and the first line was block, so it's part of a conversation. It starts out as block, where? I can't tell you where. You're supposed to follow my movements. Well then slow down. You can't tell an enemy soldier to so slow down. The length of the conversation does not make it better. Not the biggest fan of this start. I, it just wasn't doing it for me and I gave it two out of five stars. I gave the book three out of five stars even though I fell 2.5 but now saying that feels like cheating so I did not get this right but I feel like my ground feeling was correct on this. Here were the next book. I just finished The Midnight Library and I am still emotionally captivated by what happened. This might make it onto 
my favorite shelf. It's definitely a five out of five stars. I love this book. This book is about Nora who decides to end her life and she then comes into this library and has the option to cancel out her regrets and find a life that she wants to continue to live. So there's like all these parallel lives where she chose a different path and she gets to live these lives and see if she finds one that she likes better. And yes, it's kind of extremely predictable. It's kind of, there's no big surprise about the message and everything, but the message is still powerful and the message is still there and it's still beautiful. And the way it's written is just so wonderful and it's a message that needs to be out there and I just enjoyed it so so much. I think that if this is going to be the Goodreads winner this one probably actually deserves it. I enjoyed it and I actually think that this is a really really good book club book because there's easily so much that you could talk about and there's easily so many cool questions that you could ask about this. In the Once Upon a Book Club box that this came in was um, a set of questions and the first question I'm still thinking about is what would your library be and um, who would be your librarian? If you've read the book you understand the question and try and answer it. I can't yet but I think it's fun to think about it. Anyways, oh I loved it and I actually also predicted that I loved it. The first sentence was the 19 years before she decided to die Nora's seat set in the warmth of the small library at Hazel Dean School in the town of Bedford and I gave it five out of five stars and I was right. This is a five out of five stars. I think that what I've seen in the writing style in the first sentence, why I liked it, I did see throughout the book and that's what made it so good aside from the very obvious message, the very obvious and predictable plot. It was still wonderful, so yay! Okay, what's next? <laughs> so I am back and I have three books that I finished. First, I finished Hungry Hearts. I read it on a script. Hungry Hearts is an anthology of 13 tales of food and love. I should have known that this is probably not for me because I'm not into like the silly, meet cute, romancy stories that have no point. I'm usually not the uh, best person to read a... why am I turning away? To read an anthology because usually within an anthology I feel like it is not going deep enough. I feel like characters tend to be a little bit more shallow, a little bit more brushed across. I just haven't read really really good short stories, at least none that I can think of. If you have a good a short story that you really really liked, please share it with me. I would love to find some good ones but I also don't want to try a ton because in the past mostly I was not a fan. I actually think that I liked the Throne of Glass short stories or some of them. The Hungry Hearts, uh, 13 Tales of Food and Love, I loved the food bit. I loved how um, I could smell the foods that were described but aside from a few stories that were really surprising with the content that it was about, I only was able to give this a two out of five stars because most of the stories just didn't even have a message. They just were about somebody experiencing a day. That's what it felt like. That's not necessarily exactly true but that's the vibe and the feeling. No point, no character development. I know there's not a lot of character development possible. It just, mm, it just wasn't it for me. It actually plays on this like one street that has the multicultural, like a ton of different restaurants and food trucks etc. And so we get exposed to a lot of different types of food and smells and everything. And I love that part, but it just ended up being a two out of five because overall there was just no point to the stories. Again, po potentially not 100% true, but the overall vibe. The first sentence obviously is just from the first short story then, but it's still the first sentence. It's, it had rained the day Anna's mother died, but that was hardly unusual because it rained most days in England. That was the first sentence. I thought it was going to be a three out of five stars but it's only a two out of five stars. So the next is a Nora and Kettle. Nora and Kettle is a Peter Pan retelling where Peter is a lost child after the war as a Japanese American. That's a historical background that I would have liked to hear a little bit more about. Actually drew me towards this book because I know, don't hate me, not the biggest Peter Pan fan. 
then our Wendy is Nora who lives in an abusive home and has a reason to flee, has a reason to get away. I think that this setup was really really interesting to see how Peter Pan would pan out <laughs> with this background but I misjudged this a little. The domestic abuse in this book is real, like it's next level and it feels so painful. I feel like Laura Nicole Taylor described it so well. If domestic abuse triggers you at all, like the slightest, do not touch this book. This will potentially drive you over the edge. I found it too hard to continue at times and I had to put it down because it just it touched me so much. I gave it four out of five stars. The writing was beautiful and I really enjoyed this prompt and this setup. I just wish I would have understood a little bit more about the background of like the Japanese American etc. The first sentence, this time between the dark and the dawn is mine. And I gave it four out of five stars. Another one is spot on. Yay! The last book that I read yesterday, that I finished yesterday, is Amusing Ourselves to Death. Amusing Ourselves to Death is a non-fiction book that is critiquing the media and the use of media. Whereas Neil Postman does have a few points that he's making that I can get behind, I felt like this book was just lackluster. This book was cherry-picking ideas and proof for his points in a way that I feel like that this is not a non-fiction analysis, a non-fiction educational book. This is propaganda against television. In his mind, books are good because the written word can properly transport thoughts and the other media bad because it cannot transport thoughts, it transports the wrong messages and the wrong stuff. And he's just cherry picking his proof so much, he's just looking at it so one-sided, he is just painting a picture of saying we're all doomed because we're not reading and writing enough because we have a TV and it's just too much, it's just to propaganda, written a little bit more in my re review on Goodreads and I have linked really really good reviews on Goodreads in my review to other Goodreads reviews who've done a phenomenal job of telling you why this is just not it and yeah I was disappointed because I did like the idea, mostly it just didn't hit the spot. I think one of the biggest issues that I also had was that he would say that this is caused by XYZ when I thought well it might be the other way around, it might be a symptom or it might be that we're adapting, we're evolving and we are changing towards how we're evolving and we're trying to adjust our behavior to new ways that we learned and he's just not neutrally trying to shed light on it in different ways. So, so uh, really disappointed. Two out of five stars. I actually thought this was going to be a 4.5 star. Oh, I was wrong about this one. I was really wrong about this one. In 1984, if you were alert back then, this refresher might be unnecessary, even laughable. I was wrong.